So, hi guys. We're Hello. just here okay. to um, give our response really to the Dower team that put out a video on us last week saying that they weren't going to talk to us anymore. Bit of a shame, really. Um, we're, we're very we, sad about that, to be honest. And uh, we just <laughs> wanted to address some of the things they brought up in their video. Um, one of the first things they said was that we're here to cause trouble. Uh, and we want to absolutely affirm we're not here to cause trouble in any shape or form. We're here to preach the gospel of Christ and we're here to hold Islam to account. We're practicing our freedom of speech, same as everybody here. We want to ask questions of Islam and they're robust questions. And because, you know, we know that in Islam, um, you know, people die when they leave it, for example. We know what it's like to be a woman in Islam and things like that. We think these questions that urgently need to be addressed, but it's not about causing trouble. <laughs> And don't you think there's something a bit ironic about saying that we're here to cause trouble? Because like, what happens to us week in, week out? Yeah, they call us hate preachers, they call us uh, liars, but they don't have any proof that we're lying, we're doing hate preaching. All we're doing is what, we're reading what the Quran and the Hadith says. In fact, if they are consistent and honest, Muhammad is a hate preacher and the Quran is filled with hate speech if they're consistent with that. So our goal is we care for the souls of Muslims. That includes you, Hashim, and Mansur. We care for your soul that you don't end up in hell, that we want you to end up in heaven with Christ Jesus. So if we are persistent in our ways of trying to give you the gospel and also trying to show you that Islam is a false religion, it's because we care for your soul. We want you to understand that that's our bedrock foundational um, uh, principles and why we're here, the reasons why we're here, because we care for the social mm. Muslims. And there was something else in the video about them feeling harassed, and, and maybe we have got something to apologise for on this. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I mean, um, the, the reality is this is, I mean, when I first actually started coming to the corner, the people that I did watch, um, of, you know, um, on YouTube were people like, you know, leaders like Monsu and like um, Hashim. And um, often when I started coming, I mean, I would find them um, when I got into conversations, they would come around and they would heckle me, um, me as well. So what, what I would say is that um, part of Speaker's Corner is free speech, of course, but there's also heckling involved. And of course, you know, you know, as Christians, we don't want to overstep our boundary. And if there's any way that we cause offence, yeah, we, we, we apologise. But, yeah. but, but the reality is, is, is that, um, you know, we, we, they are familiar with the environment. We are familiar with the atmosphere of the Spears Corner. There's a lot of passion involved and so on and so forth. But what we don't want to do is have double standards. We see the Dawa team week in, week out, heckling, um, surrounding Christians, new, you know, especially sometimes new converts. Um, bombarding them with obscure verses from the um, the um, chapter or, um, from the Bible yeah. you know the on and on about the Trinity and so the reality is this is that you know we we just don't want to be soaking over this stuff we don't we, what we do what we want is just good discussions yeah. good debates to be able to kind of look into the, the, the information and then be able to extract mm. what is true and so that's yeah, what we absolutely do. Yeah. yeah and we want to say sorry if anyone does feel harassed by us like we say, Speaker's Corner is quite a robust place. There's a difference, I think, between harassing somebody and just being persistent in order to hold something to account. Um, and that's what we've been trying to do. But again, we're sorry if we've crossed the line there. Um, it was interesting when um, one of the Dawa team in the video uh, quoted Matthew 7, 21, 22 uh, to us to say that Jesus would consider us evildoers. I thought it was quite funny, really, that uh, a Muslim <laughs> would go to the Bible to say what, to talk about judgment. It's very interesting that they don't pronounce judgment on us based on what the Quran says. And it's also very fascinating that in that very same passage that was read, um, you know, it assumes that people will call Jesus Lord. Again, something that the Dawa team don't do. They don't call him Lord. Um, so I thought that was quite funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, and also, um, it's quite interesting that they, that the, one of this uh, member of the Dawa team would seems to know the mind of Jesus and knows exactly how Jesus is going to judge us at the last day. That you, you've got quite a high opinion of yourself if that's kind of what you know. Anyway, uh, by the by. Um, one of the Dawa team in the video also accused us, and this is where I think this is all about really, um, that we come up to people giving them fantastical, whimsical theories. But you know, guys, we all know, don't we, what this thing is really about? The fact is, what this is really about is that no Muslim here has sufficiently 
answer the question, who is Allah praying to? Um, Muslims are completely on the ropes on this question. Um, we've asked it again and again and again, and actually nothing they see can get, nothing they say to us gets around the fact that Allah is praying. Yeah, and we see that all over the place. Where do we see that? Wow. We see that in the Quran itself, we see the Hadith, we see it in the Tafsirs, we see it in Arabic dictionaries, uh, we see it in every Muslim. If you ask them, what does Salat mean? They will all say that it means pray. Um, uh, and the other thing we, uh, uh, you know, one of the, the Dharma team was saying, this is about academic standards. If you answer them to an academic standard, actually no one has answered even to a very basic standard yeah. this question, let alone to an academic standard. Um, one, one more thing. So uh, the, the Dawa team said here that we've been refuted because it means Allah praises. Is that right? That's, that's, that's actually very embarrassing. Yeah, but you know, even if Allah praises Muhammad, which is P-R-A-I-S-E-S, -E am I right with the spelling? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Surah Fatiha says all praises goes to Allah. Mm. All. Yeah. So if Allah is praising Muhammad, that's even worse. Because that's making Muhammad equal to Allah. And you call that shirk yeah. in Islam. But of course you're not going to call that as Muslims. You're going to be like, oh no, you know, Allah can do what he wants or whatever your response is. Mm. But the fact of the matter is Allah is P-R-A-Y-S. He's praying to, uh, for Muhammad, not to Muhammad, sorry. For Muhammad, we don't know to, who to, but if he's praising, then that is still shirk in Islam. And it doesn't also change the fact that um, Muhammad Hijab in his debate with David Wood, he never brought that up. He never said praises. He never actually challenged David on no, using the word pray at all. Yeah. So again, this is an example of them frantically backtracking. <laughs> yeah. And also, like we brought up the corner last week, Muhammad Hijab also said um, that Salah is du'a. Okay, he said that in the debate. What does du'a mean? Du'a means the highest form of worship. It means supplication. The Dawah team is just digging themselves into a much bigger hole over all of this stuff. No one has even begun to refute us on this so we say the, the reason why they don't want to talk to us yeah I believe I don't know about you guys I believe it's not because of us but it's because of the material that we're presenting they don't have any answers yeah or they're embarrassed yeah. to answer it or they will become like you know I don't mind debating anybody any Muslim with time three minute I talk three minute you talk that's what I want but with some of the Muslims, they don't want to do that because they know that the material, not me, the material would damage it completely. Mm -hmm. They would damage it. Because you, you also, I think we have to remember, like I remember, again, going back to when I first started the corner, yeah. came to the corner, a lot of Christians were being bombarded with answers for the Trinity. They wanted a quick, sharp answer right now. And, you know, they, you know, and you know, why is Jesus God and so on and so forth. And so now we've gone away. What we've done is we've gone away. Yeah. We've studied this information. We've researched it. The correct way is when, when, you, when you're losing the debate, like these Muslims are, what you do is you go away, you study, then you come back with a better argument. Mm. Rather than go on camera and just whinge and soak and say, oh, we don't Man have like any, you know, you know these, these like Christians. Okay, thanks, Baba. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's rather than to start, you know, yeah. um, making excuses and saying, oh, well, you know, yeah. they don't really want to answer and, yeah. you know, this. So the, yeah. the whole idea is that we are here to have good, wholesome, you know, um, discussions. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 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 Anyway, let, let's wrap this up. Also, they accuse us of being uh, deceivers. We've not deceived anybody. Yeah. We've just gone straight to the sources. We've gone to the Quran, the Hadith, the Tafsirs. We've shown That's them it. from their sources yeah. It. Yeah. what it says. Uh, they resorted to personal attacks, to mockery, to making fun of us. Mm. And now suddenly they just don't want to engage. So look, people, look at the tactics that yeah. we're up against. OK, and then ask yourself, if you're a Muslim watching this, is this a religion that I want to follow? Uh, where th these kind of tactics are used, where they don't, instead of giving proper arguments, they just basically give mockery and then non-engagement. Yeah. Or do you want to come to a religion that is completely stands up to scrutiny, um, where you have everlasting life through Jesus Christ, through his cross, what he's done for yeah. you? Come to know yeah. Christ. I, mean, I, add, I don't know, obviously, what you've not said, but I said it earlier on, that there's a lot of hypocrisy from a lot of the Dawa team in the park where they'll say, for example, DCCI, they don't talk about Christianity, they talk about Islam. And I think it's a narrative that they're trying to control because ultimately, even if you want to talk about 
Islam 100%. This is what Speakers Corner is about. There's no obligation for anyone to speak about anything. Even if you're a Christian, you, I can come here and talk about capitalism. No one can come and say, oh, I need to talk about communism. This is what Speakers Corner is about. So everyone has the freedom to speak about what they want to. Especially when the Bible doesn't mention Islam or uh, Muhammad. But then if the Quran talks about Christians, as a Christian, you have the right to then defend yourself against the slanders and the claims that are being made against you. So therefore, they have every single right to come to this park every single week, week in, week out, and talk 100% about Islam if they choose to. So there's no one in this park who can claim to say, you know, you have to talk about this because this is where people are starting to try and control the narrative. So people always talk about other different things, whatever they want to. Uh, this is Speaker's Corner. It's like you can't enter a boxing match and get punched in the face and complain that you got punched in the face. You know what the, what it's about, so therefore you um, abide by the rules. And people seem to come to the park and get offended when these things happen. But this is what Speaker's Corner is about. We yeah. have the freedom to speak about whatever we want. So if DCCI chooses to talk about Islam every single week, that's their prerogative. And no one can say, well, you should be talking about Christianity or whatever, because it's not called Gospel's Corner or, you know, it's about freedom of speech and you can criticise whatever. Yeah. And Muslims will always go to the narrative, for example, when they'll say Muslims were attacked in the Quran, so therefore the offensive uh, attacks by Muhammad were in response. So therefore, if your Quran is attacking Christianity, we in that same aspect have the right to attack what is in the book and therefore no one can complain about it. So it's a double standard and a double narrative that we're seeing in the park. But, you know, the Bible says resist the devil and the devil will flee. So that's why you're seeing certain people say they will not engage with DCCI anymore. They're tired of getting refuted week in, week out. So now they're using a the charade to say, oh, it's because they're insincere or something like that. But when we look at their videos, they will go to weak Christians who do not know their faith and twist the scripture so they look silly in front yeah, exactly. of other That's Muslims. What we've been saying, yeah. So therefore they have no right to go yeah, and say yeah, anything yeah. Exactly. because yeah. Hashim has been speaking about the Trinity for God knows how long, the last, the last 10 years or yeah. however long he's been at the park. But you do not see Muslims saying, oh Ma um, Hashim, stop talking about the Trinity, talk about Islam. So therefore we see in this double standard and we should expose the false narrative that they're spreading. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Both said, both said.